In this video, we're going to get some practice using those common derivative and common integral examples. We'll start off with the derivatives. I have six example problems here that I will go through exactly how to take the derivatives of them in hopes that this will help you understand derivatives and integrals a little bit more. This first problem falls under the format where we have c times x to the n, except for this time our variable is t. We have no c. c is just 1, so 1 times anything is just whatever that thing is and n is 3. So the derivative of this, I'm going to write dv dt. v is our function, t is our variable, is n, because c is 1, times our variable t, raised to the n minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So the derivative of this function is 3t squared. Next, we have the function a of t equals 3t squared plus 5. When we have addition or subtraction, we simply take the derivative of each portion by itself and then add together the derivatives. So I'll start by taking the derivative of 3t squared. I have a c this time. c is 3, so I have 3 times n, which is 2, times my variable, t, raised to the n minus 1. 2 minus 1 is simply 1. So that's the derivative of my first term plus the derivative of my second term. As you noticed when I gave you the common derivatives, the derivative of any constant is 0. 5 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. Simplifying this a little bit more, 3 times 2 is 6. So the derivative of my function is 6t. This next example has a cosine in it. x of t is 0.5 meters times cosine of t. Anytime you have a constant in front of that function, the derivative is that constant times the derivative of the function. So dx dt is that constant, 0.5 meters, times the derivative of cosine of t. If I look at my sheet, the derivative of cosine of t is negative sine. So 0.5 meters times negative sine of t, I'm going to put my negative out front here, and so the derivative of that function is negative 0.5 meters times the sine of t. Looking at d, I have f of x equals 1.3 divided by x to the fourth. That doesn't seem to follow any of the rules that you're given but that's just because it's written in a slightly different way. Whenever you have your variable in the denominator, you should always rewrite your function before taking its derivative. I can rewrite this as 1.3 times x to the negative fourth. Now I can clearly see that that does follow one of our rules. And just to throw some different notation out there, I'm going to say f prime of x and c is 1.3, n is negative 4, so 1.3 times negative 4 times x to the negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. You, of course, should simplify that, as you commonly do. And simplifying that, I would have negative 5.2 divided by x to the fifth. Okay, again, we're going to have to rewrite things for our next one. 
4 divided by t. That's the same thing as saying 4 times t to the negative 1 minus the square root of t. That's the same thing as saying t to the 1 half. Both of those two terms fall under the same rule we've been using. So dv dt, 4 times t to the negative 1. c is 4, n is negative 1, t is my variable. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. For the next term, I don't have a c. n is 1 half. t is my variable. 1 half minus 1 gives me negative 1 half. Rewriting this, I get negative 4 divided by t squared minus 1 divided by 2 times the square root of t. For the very last one, I gave you something real complicated. Again, I'm going to rewrite it first. 0.15 times t to the negative two-thirds minus ln of t. Taking the derivative of that, we take the derivative of each term separately. My first term follows under the same rule we've been using. Like I said, we'll use it a lot. c is 0.15, n is negative two-thirds, times t to the n minus 1. Negative 2 thirds minus 1 gives me negative 5 thirds. Minus the derivative of the ln of t, the derivative of the natural log of t, which is 1 over t. And so simplifying this, I end up getting 0.1 missing a negative sign there, sorry, negative 0.1 divided by t to the 5 thirds. Now I'm okay with you not putting that back into the square root notation, but if you want to put it back into that square root notation, go for it. Minus 1 over t. Hopefully this leaves you a little more comfortable with derivatives. We're now going to transition and look at the practicing some integrals and some antiderivatives. So we're going to be using these rules. Sometimes it takes a little bit to transition your brain from doing derivatives to doing integrals because you're literally doing the opposite. So make sure you keep it straight exactly which rule you are using as you are doing these. It's also very important to look at what's after the d. So notice that this first one has dv. Remember, that's not a variable. That just tells me what the variable is, because notice that I have a b and a v here. So this is telling me that v is the variable. b is a constant. And this follows under that rule that is the antiderivative of a to x to the n. n is 1 in this case. a is negative b. So following my rule, I have negative b times v to the n plus 1, which would be 2, because n is 1, divided by n plus 1 which is 2 plus c. You can always check yourself by taking the derivative of your answer to see if you get what's inside that integral sign. Okay. This one could be rewritten. You don't have to. 
we may often rewrite as negative b over 2 because that's going to be a number times the variable v squared plus c. Moving on to our next problem, we have the integral of mv squared over r dr. Again, you're going to treat m and v squared as constants because this problem tells me that r is the variable. So I have those constants m v squared times the integral of 1 over r dr. You can pull them out like that to make your life easier. That's equal to m v squared. And this 1 over r dr follows one of our rules. It's the ln of r. And then we always add a plus c to the end. Okay. Next one down, I have the integral of 1 half kx squared minus mgh. x is my variable. For this very first portion, I have 1 half k times x squared. Well, the 1 half and the k are constants. So then I have the integral of x squared dx. So 1 half k, those are my constants. That's what's a in the equation I gave you, the general equation, times x to the n plus 1, well n is 2, n plus 1 is 3, divided by n plus 1, which is 3. And then I have minus the integral of mgh dx. Well, there's no x in there, so m, g, and h are all constants. The integral of a constant is that constant times the variable. And now we want to simplify this because you never want two fractions multiplied by each other. So kx cubed divided by 6 minus mghx. These next examples, we have two left, are definite integrals. Definite integrals will have a number as their answer, often, rather than an equation as their answer. I'm going to rewrite this to make it a little bit easier to take the antiderivative before we plug numbers in. So it's the integral from 1 to 4 of 4 times x to the negative 3 dx. The integral of 4 times x to the negative 3 is 4 times x to the n plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 divided by negative 2. And I evaluate that between 1 and 4. That means that I end up plugging in 1 and 4 once I simplify this. As I simplify this, I find that my antiderivative is negative 2 divided by x squared between 1 and 4. And so I start off always plugging in the upper limit minus the lower limit. So negative 2 divided by 4 squared minus negative 2 divided by 1 squared. This gives me negative 17 over 8. Again, a number, not an equation. Last one that we have, and I'm going to kind of move this down over here. The antiderivative from 0 to pi over 2 of a times the cosine of t dt. Well, we have a rule about the integral of the cosine of a variable. And that says that the cosine of a variable, integral of a cosine of a variable, is the sine of a variable. And so I just put that a in there. This is a times the sine of t 
between zero